summertime meadow. Deep carpet of lush green grass starred with flowers. The stars here are marguerites, but you might also find dandelions, buttercups, clover, thistle and scores of others. The summer sun turns many parts of the world brown, but meadows of Britain remain green and pleasant. We breathe the scents of flowers and grass. We see the ripple made by a soft breeze. And we feel, and often say, what a pleasant place a meadow is. In it, many different plants and animals live their lives, depending on one another in strange ways. A few minutes down among the grasses, will reveal some of the activity, strangeness and beauty of this life. The ladybird, an oval-shaped spotted little beetle. It feeds on aphides, greenfly and blackfly. Its mouth parts are adapted to sucking. The whole inside of the aphis is sucked out, leaving only a dry, empty skin. A close look at some of the plants is worthwhile. In the damp parts there's the pale pink ragged robin and the soft white seed heads of cotton grass. Dandelion clocks, each made of scores of parachutes, all ready to be blown away. Pretty, no doubt, but not wanted by the farmers. In the drier parts, there's the hare's foot trefoil, and the common, unpopular with the farmer, and difficult to get rid of, yarrow. Deeply divided leaves, and numerous pink-white flower heads. warm summer's day. While the long-tongued creatures suck nectar from these flowers, some pollen is brushed onto their coats. Watch the pollen-loaded anther touch the insect's back. It will take this pollen to other flowers and so fertilize them. It's a long reach down into the spur of the flower this bee has found a short cut. It is piercing the spur and getting the nectar without playing any part in pollination. It's fortunate that most bees do not do this. Some flowering plants and bees depend on each other to their mutual benefit. But with snails, things are different. Underneath the head and in front of the muscular foot of the snail, there's a mouth containing a tongue covered with short horny teeth. Green plants of all kinds become victims of the snail's powerful little tongue. But the most important plants of the meadow are the grasses, which man depends on more than on any other plant. Here's some grass in flower. Where there is grass, there are grasshoppers. Above the quiet hum of the other insects, you can often hear their chirping. Powerful back legs used for high and long jumps, rather fearsome in close view. They're quite harmless, really. They chirp either by scraping their legs together or by rubbing a toothed ridge on their legs along the edge of their wings. Here's a female. She has a long ovipositor which she forces into the soil to deposit between 30 and 100 eggs. These eggs will hatch next year in the early summer. The young grasshoppers are like their parents, but are wingless in the early stages. Not long after laying her eggs, the female will die. Only the eggs will survive the winter. That was a looper caterpillar, and this is the caterpillar of a drinker moth. But for really interesting locomotion, the millipede gets the prize.
Some plants in the meadow have a defense against being eaten. Nettles, for example, and thistles. The peacock butterfly is flitting between nodding thistle and common thistle. If the meadow is in the fen district, you might see the rare swallowtail, with a wingspan of over three inches. Watch this female very carefully and you'll see her lay an egg. There. The egg is light colored at first, but it darkens as the time for hatching nears. The minute black caterpillar emerges, eats part of the eggshell, and after feeding on milk parsley, fennel, or wild carrot, grows into a handsome creature like this. The black markings, which form a band round each segment of the body, are broken by a series of orange spots. The background color is apple green. It's ready now to change into a pupa. It attaches its tail to the stem of the plant and hangs in a little silky loop which it has spun. brightly colored outer skin is gradually shed. The pupa will remain like this until next summer. From it the butterfly will emerge. At first its wings are crumpled, but soon it will become that superb creature, the swallowtail. If your meadow is on the chalk downs, then you will almost certainly see the burnet moths. One is about to emerge from this pupa. It has five red spots on its small wings. The six-spot burnet is the most common. Most moths are creatures of the dusk and night time, but the burnets fly in daylight. In summer sunshine there are scores of butterflies and moths to be seen over the meadows. There's no sight more dainty and colorful than one of these creatures extracting nectar from a flower. The few minutes which we've spent down among the grasses have brought us their reward. But what we have seen is really very little. For those who care to look further, there is no limit to the interesting life histories and to the ways in which various forms of life depend on each other in that deep carpet of lush green grasses starred with flowers. Summertime Meadow. <laughs>